back to the great conversation. We are talking about people that did team sports as children are now adults and they were told all those years that those team sports were great for helping them with teamwork and being competitive and working hard. And yet all of these adults in the real world now don't seem super successful in that way. Yeah. So what happened? Yeah. That's a really negative approach it, to it. It is kind of negative, but, and it's kind of generalizing. Yes. But basically we're trying to create this stark contrast of do team sports lead to being a team player? That is my first question for you. Do team sports lead to being a team player? And my general answer would be, uh, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah. Because like I said, when I look around at people our age, we're struggling to like find something that we're passionate about. And maybe it's the fact that we can't find that thing. And it's like, oh, but sports are so much fun. I found soccer, I found football, I found mm -hmm. basketball, and there weren't as many options. And so it's like, okay, I'm gonna be passionate about that. And yet they get to the workforce and it's like, okay, where's that passionate thing that I can be competitive in, that I can push myself in, that I can like organize my time around so that I have time to really do well and, and be successful. Yeah. And then work well with my teammates and score the goal and win. Yeah. And so is the question like, we just don't know what that thing is as adults, or is it that it never really taught us that as kids? Yeah. And that's that's kind of why I'm like, I don't know if it really teaches people that. Well, I think like the for me, the follow up question is like, did it teach you how to go after something and attack it well? So for instance, whether it would be, you know, what, what I see is like a lot of times I see people on a team, they're either like the jock, they're like the best player on the team, or they're like getting, you know, kind of pushed to the side, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's like, there's really, to me, a lot of times what I saw growing up is there was no like team aspect as much as there was like the really good players and the players that kind of sucked and dragged the team down. Okay. And so like my point is like, what I see as more valuable, and I do think sports are valuable, is like the individual sports because mm -hmm. it's either all on the line or it's not either on the line, it's all on the line and you either win or you lose. Mm. And people could say, well, that's a team sport as well. I say, yeah, but everything's riding on you. So mm. sink or swim, you are accountable. Mm -hmm. And I think like the one thing that I feel like team sports don't really teach well is accountability. Mm -hmm. Cause you could always push it off on the other guy, which is probably one of the strongest dynamics inside of uh, companies where so many people get upset and frustrated is the blame game, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, she was the reason I quit that job because she was a bad team player or she didn't pull her weight or I didn't like how she spoke to me. And if we had all these team sports and team players, well, why didn't we learn how to work with people's bad habits right. as much as their good habits? Yeah, the whole idea of don't be a sore loser. Yeah, you know but that, people, yep, go. So the kid goes out for his basketball game, soccer game, football game, whatever, and yeah, he didn't get the pass. Or yeah, just oh, was, if Johnny would have passed the ball to me, we would have scored, and right. then we would have won. Right, and so I think parents do try to work through that with their kids. Mm -hmm. I think that it's like, okay, I'm going to put you in the sport. The entire family is sacrificing financially, yeah. time, effort, you know, maybe we don't have a family meal every night because there's a game yeah. or we don't go on a vacation as a family because we got to be here for, you know, all the practices. And so everything's thrown into this effort for sports. And then, then the excuse is, but it's good. Like, even though we're pouring everything into my child's sport, it's good because it's teaching them how to be a team player. Yeah. And when they are a sore loser, we talk through it. We talk yes. through the dynamics of the game and how to work together. And my thought is more that it's because it's kind of a fantasy. It's yeah. not the real world. So yeah. why? And I know the idea is like. Why is it not the real world? Let's lay it out. Yeah. I mean, first of all, like I said, there's not as many options. You play. There's like okay. a few sports to choose from, yeah. right? Football, soccer, baseball, And hockey. they're seasonal. Yeah. So in that sense, you know, maybe you get to do them all. Because, you know, as a parent, you're like, okay, you can do this one in the fall, this one in the spring. Oh, so it kind of teaches you to jump from thing to thing to thing as well. And just you kind of get to do it all. Like, you don't have to pick. You just get to do them both. You love sports and you get to do both of them. Mm -hmm. um, the parent is really the one sacrificing. The child just gets to have fun. Yeah. And yeah, it's hard, but, and especially as you get into like more high school sports, you got to keep your grades up and you got to balance the two. And I, so I'm not saying that you just throw it out altogether. I think that there yes. are 
things that are beneficial. But when the family, the statement comes out, man, we're all sacrificing. This is really hard. Is it worth, this is what we're getting at. Is it worth having your kids, our kids, as we are now the parents in the situation, mm -hmm. having them in team sports? That's when the conversation. When it's the sacrifice of the family. Exactly. And is it getting the result that you're hoping for? Right. That we're kind of That's as the just question throwing out there as life. Answer. This is going to make me feel better. Yeah. It's almost like you're kind of like hoping that this thing, this distraction will do the work so that your child will be this successful person. Because that's, in essence, isn't that the goal of education, whether it be sports or schooling, so that they are a competent adult right. who can provide for themselves? And yeah, and be successful in society. Yeah. And so again, like back to the question of why isn't it like the real world? So the parent's the one really pouring financially into the sport, yeah. time, sacrifice. And so that doesn't really feel like the real world. And then when you actually get into the game of this is a team effort, yeah. I don't know if the real world really is a team effort. Ooh. It's sink or swim. Mm. And yes, when you're in a company and there's a company project, it's still sink or swim because if you don't bring your Ooh. weight to the table, oh girl, you're probably going to go. Yeah, so that's exactly what that's the point the I was going to get at. The company's not necessarily going to fail. You're going. Exactly. The thing is, would you and here's my opinion, singular sports, so like golf with your most potential and that's how you're the, the best. The most potential and most effort. Yeah, that's how you're the best team player. Mm -hmm. You pull your weight. Mm -hmm. You don't expect somebody else to pull your weight. Yeah. And that's what single, singular sports, what am I trying to say? Uh, solo sports yeah. teach you. Mm -hmm. Rock climbing. You fall off the wall, you got to get back on the wall and keep going. Nobody is dragging your rope with you. Right, right. You know, and that's the thing is like singular sports teach you how to be a counterpart in a company that creates success in your role. Yes. You can't look to somebody else and say, hey, pull my weight, mm -mm. right? You can't have a bad day as a solo sports player. Mm. You have to bring your all every right. single time. Yeah. And to me, that is the value of a solo sport over a team right. sport. Right, right, right. So really, it really does external competition, a sport, a team sport, create long-term personal motivation, mm. right? Because that's also the goal of, of sports or team sports is like you want to teach a child or a person how to – continue to go but it's an external motivation the other team might score on you right mm, yeah and so do you or like my my teammates might beat me up after yeah my teammates would be mad at me my, <laughs> my coach, coach might yell scream at, me. at me yeah, yeah. exactly like is yeah. that enough to create long-term personal motivation i think it's an element okay. and i think that that's the thing that we forget about so many aspects of raising our children and providing different experiences for them is that we think that there's one answer hmm. and we just pour everything into that. And that team That's my personality. Is, is going it? to do it. No. Like that one thing is going to just help our child just pop out great yeah. in, when they're 18 and they're going to be successful. Yeah. And that's the problem with pouring everything into sports. And I think so many people do it. It's just, it's all sports and they got to keep their grades up, but it's all sports. Hmm. And then... They turn 18 and maybe they go to college on a scholarship in sports. Yeah, so in that way, it's good. They got more education because sports help them. Right. But then after college, a Do you lot keep of sports? people always just look back to when they were in team sports. And and it was the great it was the great time of life. Yeah. And now everything else is just chaos. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to be successful in their job. They don't know how to push themselves in their job or be passionate about their job. Yeah. And I understand that a lot of people want to get out of the nine to five. Yeah. Because it's not fun for them anymore. But it's team sports. <laughs> yeah. Aren't team sports the best? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Right. And yeah. so back to the one element, that's what with our children, the team sports is kind of gonna be the last thing. It's if like if they it's, want to. If they if want to. They have to. a dying interest. Right. But but it's not something that we're like, okay, this is the front of the line option. Yeah. It's gonna be like, okay after we've done all of these other things on our, our list, yeah. if we have time for it, then you can play for yeah. fun. Yeah. And we're not going to look at it to be this thing that's going to raise them up and teach them everything they need to know to be an adult. Yeah, for sure. Because we just don't live in that world. Sports is still just something that we love to be entertained by on TV, by yeah. all the professionals. Yeah. And I know that as a parent, it's our hope that our child will be, we'll be that professional. professional. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's such a tiny percentage. Yeah. And so why are we putting all of this time and effort into it and all the sacrifice for that to not be the case for our child. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the biggest things is like learning um, to find something that you can push yourself hard in. And that could be a team sport. It could be a skill set, whether it be art or music. Yes. 
you know, where you're are constantly refining that. And I think like the ability to take an L, like a loss, mm-hmm. you know, so for instance, you know, your child is a, is working on being a pianist and they go to their piano recital and they just suck. They absolutely suck, right? That's taking an L. That is humiliation. That is so important. Mm-hmm. Where again, like I said, if you're on the team sport context, you can just blame Frankie or Johnny could, yeah. and just be like, yeah, they sucked and that's why we lost today. Mm-hmm. But like, if it is just you, mm-hmm. there is no getting around it. And I feel like that is so crucial and so yeah. important to coping in the real world. Yeah, and so that is why- You don't bring things... your team to a job interview. Right, you don't. And that is why- those things are on our list first. Mm -hmm. Being able to survive and push yourself solo. Yeah. And I even said that recently about Pennington, our second born, is that I don't necessarily want him just helping brother with whatever brother, you know, big brother is doing all the time. He needs to have his own thing. Yeah. He doesn't just need to be the younger brother that helps his older brother all the time with all those projects that he, that Bingley came up with. Yeah, yeah. He needs his own thing so that he can understand that I am my own person, I have my own abilities, and I have to learn how to really take on those challenges and push myself. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that there is a place to work together. But I just think that we rely on that so much through grade school with team sports and then even in school with all the projects that we're like supposed to do you together. Hated team projects. <laughs> because somebody <laughs> on the team, yeah. somebody in the group is not pulling their weight. Yeah. And yet, you how blamed. am I supposed to motivate them? Yeah. But they say, well, then that's that's the beauty of team sports. You have to learn how to motivate people. But that's not the real world. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. But they would say, well, what if somebody on your team, you know, you're what if you own the company and you have to learn how to motivate that person? I would say fire them. Yeah, that's what you know what I mean. Like you go find somebody else. Yeah, you find somebody that else wants the position that wants more to be there and is passionate about your company. Exactly, and is like I am self motivated. Yep. I care about what you care about, yep. and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna be successful together. And solo sports teach you to sink or swim. Mm-hmm. And so if you get fired, what you'll do is you'll probably blame the team, aka the company, Anyways, and yeah. somebody who's a solo winner, so to speak, Mm -hmm. has taken enough L's, has disciplined themselves enough to fill that position and do it well. Mm -hmm. And really like, that's like what we want to teach our children is like how to win, how to lose, and then how to push yourself to be the best you can. Because think about it, like what makes a great team? Five individuals who are really good at a specific task, Mm -hmm. right? And maybe some of them have two or three or four skills, but they don't, they shouldn't all have the same skill set. And team sports, it's like, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't agree with that. You have a pitcher necessarily... and you have a catcher. And... Yeah, they all have their specific skills. They have their skills. specific skills. And like there are a lot of things that resemble the real world. Mm-hmm. You come to your tryouts, it's just you. You sink or swim at the tryouts. That's an yeah. interview, right? Yeah, that's true. And then but you... what you're saying is that's an individual aspect. Is that what you meant? It is. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. There are aspects that are like the real world. And yeah. so I can see where people are like, no, it truly does help. And that's why I said I'm not throwing it out altogether. And I appreciate that about it's you. It's just... It should not be the end all be all. This is going to teach my child about the real world and we're all sacrificing our yes. our everything so that that child can can play sports. Absolutely. I okay. just I just see it so much. So my next question is, what do you think finite games teach the mind? And what a finite game is is basically there's a, there's a specific set of rules there's a score, there's a winning and a losing at the end of the game mm-hmm. versus an infinite game, which there are not necessarily rules, but there are ways that you play the game of life at which there is no winner, there is no loser. Everybody is kind of making money at certain areas or getting more points in certain areas. So what do you think, team sports, a finite game teaches the mind? Yes. And these finite games could even be individual sports. Right. But I think all games, in a sense, that we have come to mind are finite games. Yes. Even whether it's a team sport or an individual sport. There are rules. Everybody follows the rules. You don't go outside of the rules or you're penalized yeah. and we're all going towards the same goal. Yeah. And life is not that way. Life is, like you've said, it's an infinite game. Everybody plays by a different rule. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we're going to talk like deep, deep psychology, of course, we all come down back to the same rules but the way that we get about things are different everything's always changing the rules are changing even what the goal is kind of changes and so finite games like sports that we're playing today i don't think teach a child to really expand outside of the box so it it so creativity is not 
fostered, no. it's more of compliance? Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Similar to, I think, our school, school system. system. Yeah. You know, fit inside this box. And a lot of children do. And then there are a lot of children that don't fall inside of that box. Yes. And we just cast them off and say, you know, they're outliers and they're going to be unsuccessful. Yeah. And then they, and they might being... come back around and they're playing the infinite game. They're games, playing the infinite game. And we're all just in our nine to five job struggling because sports told us that this is the way that life worked and, and we're following the rules but why aren't we getting what we want we are getting something we're getting what we're told that we'll get we'll get our yeah. paycheck we go home we spend it a certain way and we're like but this isn't as fun as when i scored as a kid hmm. i'm getting the trophy felt a lot better than what my paycheck is now yeah and yet all those outliers liars are coming around and they're playing this infinite game so well yeah because they didn't fit inside that box. Yeah. They, they had to go and figure it out. They did. They yeah. had to figure out the infinite game. Mm -hmm. The finite game has rules. You can play it. It's defined. Mm -hmm. The infinite game takes longer to understand, but has long-term uh, rewards. Mm -hmm. Much longer term. More, it's more satisfying and fulfilling. Yeah. yeah. And I think for us, I for sure am one, even though I didn't love team sports, I actually like was like, okay, by the time I was like eight, I was like, I'm done with this. Well, you were very proficient as a very proficient ball ballerina, which yeah. is a semi-team sport. Like you're yeah. pushing yourself, but you're fitting within a team context. Right. And and I am a rule follower. Mm -hmm. I like things that have direction and I can see the path and that's my goal and I'm getting there. Yeah. And so getting into more of the infinite game has been a challenge. Yeah. But it's been a good challenge, and I think as we start reading about it more and these entrepreneurs that maybe were the outliers and they didn't find a job description that fit them yeah. and they had to create something of their own is very inspiring. Yeah. And it is motivating and it's interesting. And I think as more people start waking up to the fact that, okay, I played the team sport. Mm -hmm. I t and now I'm playing the team sport of life. Oh, yeah. But that paycheck is not as shiny as the trophy was as a kid. Yeah. And I feel like I'm blaming people and I'm not just getting exactly what I want. I think that they should step out of that and start learning from some of those outliers, some of those people that know how to play the infin infinite game. Yeah. And start this journey. Yeah. Well, I mean, what does it mean to like start a journey in a game that's undefined? Yeah you get to decide where the starting point is. What is a good starting point? What is a good end point? But that's the thing is we've been trained to find starts and ends. Mm -hmm. and oh, so, me more than it. Yeah, I love it. We, I love yeah, starting ends. Yeah, I like the directions end. And so you have to kind of reprogram your mind for an infinite game because an infinite game has no start. It has no end. You basically just enter. Mm -hmm. You just enter wherever you're at yes. and you just grapple to cope with where the current game mm -hmm. is being played yeah. are you in you know think about like 1990s when the internet started mm -hmm. you were entering the game at mm -hmm. that point right now you're entering it like what they're calling like web 3.0 and beyond yeah you know right well i think it, the way that i can now define it and i've been so resistant to it for so long Ooh. because even in this infinite game, I've I have like tried to You've put, tried to put rules. I put yeah, tried to put <laughs> rules of like I am going to start like this and I'm going to end like this. And it just I get thrown out of the current every time. Mm. And so I think of like finding Nemo when he has to like enter into you know the With um, the turtles, you mean? Yeah. Like, like they're going down the Australian current or whatever. Yes, and like it is something you just literally it there is no starter in necessarily. It's just like you enter in at some point and it's just going to take you. Yeah. And then once you're in it, it feels so much more smooth. But you have to accept that that like jumping in is going to mm. be at a random point and it's okay. It's like I kind of had this idea of if I entered in into this random time and this big current, everything would be chaos inside. Yeah. But once you like enter into it, you can see more clearly and it is more smooth. Okay. So are you saying that? Though an infinite game doesn't have necessarily defined rules, it has rhythms. Oh, for sure. Okay. I think so, yeah. I think it has a rhythm, and I think once you just, like, decide to jump in. And like we've said, this doesn't have to be, like, you quit your job and you stop yeah, doing the finite absolutely. game and you jump into this infinite game. It's something that you and I have both done in our time. Our extra time. Yeah. 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 So we have our – I'm now still working. 
uh, at a full time job until the end of this month, which mm-hmm. I'm very excited about. And so I've been playing a finite and infinite game at the same, at the same time. time, which is what we definitely encourage people to do. Like mm-hmm. if you want to build a life you love to wake up to, which is what our passion is to help other people see that and hopefully encourage them towards that. You don't, you don't build a life by loving you wake. You don't build a life you love to wake up to by quitting your job because no. the next day you're, you're going to wake up to life. a really crappy life. Yeah. And that's the you know? chaos that it can feel like if you're just going to start playing this infinite game yeah. that if I jump into this, it's going to be chaos. Mm-hmm. It looks really beautiful, but it's going to be chaos. And it yeah. doesn't have to be that way. And yeah. I don't think if you can add it in in a time that works for your current life, yeah. it has to be chaos. Well, we always say it takes five plus years to start to track, Just get, get traction on an infinite game. Mm-hmm. Um, because the infinite game, you're, you're at first, for those first five years, you're playing catch up, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're not in the game yet. You're like, you're like trying to get up to the game. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like there's this whole onboarding process. Mm-hmm. Um, Gary V talks about uh, that you're in spring training. Mm-hmm. You know, sports. you're not playing the actual sports right there. Yeah, around. sports. Like, but you're in spring training. Like, mm-hmm. you're not playing the game yet. You're warming up. You're learning the swings. You're learning the throws. Mm-hmm. If you're let's go into individual sport, you're you're at the driving range, right? Mm-hmm. And you're taking swings at the club, and mm-hmm. you're just going, going, going. And then it, eventually you hit the course, right? Mm-hmm. If we're talking about a golf analogy. Mm-hmm. And you get on the course and you start playing. And you don't hit par, right? You're hitting bogey <laughs> all day long. And then you hit par and then you start to hit one under. And then you get your first eagle. And then, you know, and so you it's, it's a progression. The infinite game is a constant state of progression. It is never completed. Nope. It is always to be played. Yep. And then you can play different infinite games. Mm-hmm. You know, you can enter here and enter there. But once you understand the rhythm... Yep. And that's what I'm it's going to change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand it, then it changes. But it doesn't feel like chaos. But it doesn't feel like chaos mm-hmm. because you've you've at least mastered uh, the principles mm-hmm. of an infinite game, yes. and you understand the flow of an infinite game, mm-hmm. though you never understand the game right. fully. Right. But it is just a mindset shift. It is. Yeah. And if you want to like read more about this, uh, I think it's his last name's Karst yeah. wrote the book Finite and Infinite Games, and then from there Simon Sinek took it further and wrote another book. And I'll actually link those below in show notes uh, if y'all want to check those out. Cheers. Cheers. Let us know where you're at in the uh, the conversation of the finite and infinite game. It's been something that's been challenging definitely for Annabelle. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm more of an infinite game player by nature. I don't like rules. I like to make things up. I, she calls me basically a bulldog. I just keep hitting a wall until it comes down, even though my face is like bleeding. I'm just like, this is great. So where are you at on the finite and infinite game? Are you a rule follower or are you more like me? We'd love to know. Love to have you guys join the great conversation. We'll see you in the next episode.